you know, it was mostly stretching. So yeah, yeah. I so I think um, it's interesting because I was trying to connect it. So on Tuesday morning, I was talking a lot about how the knee is a result of, and the fact that it's in the middle of the middle of the leg, right? It's affected by the ankles and the hips a lot. So it being the result. So Tuesday's morning, I was talking about how it's a result of what could be happening above and below. And I was just describing to them, you know, what muscles surround the knee and how you get to all sides of the knee, basically Tuesday mm -hmm. morning. So stretching that all out Tuesday evening was great. Mm -hmm. And then um, this morning, I worked on, I, ha I was more focused on getting these little VMO going and mm -hmm. the, getting that and finishing the leg motion because a straight leg there is not the same as a straight leg finished, right? So, and, and a lot of people do that. They straighten their leg, but they don't finish that motion. Oh, right. right. Where all the muscles are now on and that VMO is on. So I was trying to tell them this morning that you're wasting some work you could be doing in the short time that you're working. So why waste that opportunity? Get that leg all the way on. Um, and, and I didn't tell them this, but incidentally, it does. it's a little easier to fire if you have a tiny bit of turnout. It just, just a tiny bit of turnout will help. And some people get more of an activation in a dorsiflexion of the foot. I don't know that I ha find that absolutely true. So point tighten, right? And then activating there really gets it going. But so I had them doing um, like double leg extension hands behind, but looking at their knees and making sure they go all the way straight. Mm. Uh, so finishing motion and, and not, you know, I, I was talking about it about the knee, but it is one of my pet peeves because you lose energy through the center if your legs are not finishing their reach and their motion. So, and, and I look at people in the Zoom while I'm doing the exercise and none of, like I would say 99% of them are not finishing the motion. Um, so we're, they're losing a lot. They're losing the quad, they're losing the core too at the same time. So I didn't draw that connection through um, but maybe that would be great. I don't know if you want to try and address that, Genevieve, too. Um, this morning, I had them doing that little footwork rolling on the roller, too. I forgot to tell you that, where I had them finish it, going out, finishing that motion so the quad goes on and bringing it back. And then on the single leg and tabletop, both of them finished and back in, right? So pause, hold, tighten and then back in just to get that quad firing. Um, so that was more my today's focus. And what I was going to do tonight was stretching. But also, And then I did, uh, oh, sorry, I also was telling Genevieve that the other thing that I was having them do was my goal is to get them to find that in any position. So plank, standing in your plank is the other thing that I like to talk about a lot. But... What I mean by that is, well, if I stand up, these, and I really want to engage my quads lift, right? And I get strong. My legs are strong. I'm not standing on floppy legs like this. So just as you wouldn't stand like this, when you're in your plank, you don't want to be like this. Because this is, everything's looser. If I am here, I'm on and active, and I can stand here for a long time. Same thing happens in the plank, right? If I am here and I'm lazy, you know, I'm exaggerating just so you can see better, but it, laziness here is not the same as standing. Now I'm standing, I, I can really stand here um, for a while, but I'm standing on my legs. I'm not just hanging out like this somewhere in between. I'm standing on my legs. Um, so trying to draw and that just from those demos my muscles are on probably because I did that this morning too but they're really on just from doing what I just showed you so I was trying to relate that to so they have a functional version of it but understand 
that it's related to the work they're doing here is also that functional version. Um, and then we did uh, stepping on the band. I did a, I actually did a lot of abduction today. So I did um, this, right, wrapping around and then opening. And I did the um, standing these, right, all, all the directions, all these. Um, and then I did the hamstring curl this way. So going up, right. And then I did the, um, I wrapped the legs again and did a squat. And then, sorry, I'll turn this way. And then I unweighted one and did these um, standing clans so that they would have to find that alignment, maintain that alignment, and then just working the quads and the abduction at the same time, hip rotators, abduction. So that was basically the class this morning, just trying to get that aware. I really, I don't know why people don't just do it. <laughs> don't just extend, right? I actually have a question about, um, you know, cause I think some people, there's like the, the, the concept of like locking your knees versus fully extending your knees. Yes. Um, and I know for people who are hyperextended, that's, you know, a little bit of that, that balancing act that you have to do in standing. Um, but if the leg is unweighted, then there's no reason not to, to work the VMO and to really get the quads to turn on. Right. But if, if it's just a regular, you know, like I'm not terribly hyperextended in my knees, maybe a tiny bit, but um, like, do you still want people to have just that little micro bend in there and still have the quad on in standing or like, because I yeah. really put that pressure on the back of my knee, um, even when I feel like I'm really lifting up and trying to hold strong. <clears throat> um, and so I wonder if that's something that everybody needs to, like, I don't know. That's just a question that I've always had. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really good one. So you're right, unweighted, I don't care how far that knee goes because we're not really worried. I, really, then you can focus on the VMO. And I think to get it on unweighted, it's okay that they go a little past. Um, in standing, though, we want to create that control. So there's, there are a couple muscles that actually do that work of stopping you from hyperextending and they're probably weak in people who are loose or just looser innately. So popliteus is one of them. And then um, the gastroc crosses back there, the hamstrings cross back there. So that little connection, or, and there's one more, plantaris I think, Crosses back there. Some people don't even have plantaris though, so it's an interesting thing. A little long, it's then skinny and long. Um, but you want to find that control and standing. But if you are, if I, so I could hyperextend and try and tighten. That's the hyperextension and try and tighten. It doesn't feel great. It just feels like I'm jamming. But I can also tighten by lifting and I don't feel any of that and I've got my VMO on and I um, I tend to I tend to find it through the wrapping right mm -hmm. so through the foot through the wrap through that heel pull and then I can get that VMO on without hyperextending and actually I can hold it on and still have some freedom in my knee, I don't know if you can see that, but I can keep it on and still have some freedom in there, but it's lifted. So if, if when you go too far back, you end up compressing rather than lifting, I think, in standing. So my favorite, this is why, this is my favorite one exercise for that, it, to train people, retrain people in standing is the one with the band behind the knee. This is hard to do on, on your own, because it's nice to have it at the same level. So tying it on uh, to something 
or coming in to the springboard or having them put it in the doorway, something that gets it close, close to the same height. I can actually just use the spring on the springboard, but it's the same thing, right? Putting the back of the knee in right? and pulling back enough that you feel like the knee actually it's it's a little it's a little bent and i'm going to just work on pushing it pushing back into that band feel that activation of the quad so i can use this and the harder is to just stand on the one leg and do it without changing so not ducky butting not doing anything funky and not bending the knee forward right just staying right over my ankle and then letting the knee slightly release and then pressing it back. Let, press lift is what's happening. Press lift. So this is a great, this is my favorite one for just that retraining, to how to get the quad on in standing without hyperextending and having a, and knowing what that end point is. Because I think what happens is people who are so hypermobile cannot find the end point. And so they just keep going, thinking if I go further, I'm gonna get that muscle to activate. But that's not actually true. The muscle should activate before they get to that end point when they can go too far. So does that help? Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm so does that train the, like the popliteus and, and all of that? It, yeah, it's kind of a really reprogramming and it allows the quad to activate properly and lift so that you can find that activation. I can find that activation upward rather than backward. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, I always thought that was mainly for the quad, but I didn't think about the backside of the knee. It, um, it trains the quad and I, I don't know how you would exactly strengthen the back of the knee. Yeah. So I'm hoping that by default they start to learn also. <laughs> I don't know if there is any specific way to do that uh, other than the job of the pop lettuce is to unlock it so it um unlocks the knee and allows you to bend it okay that's its function so i don't know how you strengthen it but giving it that retraining would really really help i think mm -hmm. okay Stuff to play with? Yeah. Yeah, because that, that was always just a question for me for like, because I know you're not supposed to lock your knees, but then I wouldn't have trouble articulating, and probably because I wasn't understanding myself, how to, how to get people to activate the quads and straighten the leg without knocking into the knee and without um, just, I guess, buckling into the back of the knee. Yeah, spend some time with that one. Yeah. I've done it also, I mean, now we're not doing this, but I've also done it in classes where I have two people take a looped band and put uh, each facing each other, and then they're working on it um, together. And it's kind of cool to just have somebody working and pulling away, and you're pulling back, because then you really feel the work of your quad holding their resistance back as they're pulling. So you really have to pull it's, it's kind of cool that way too, it just makes it more interesting. Um, if you ever go back to, you know, a dance class or something and you want to do it. Whenever yeah. we do people facing each other and in the same room. <laughs> yeah, in the same yeah. room facing each other, yes. <laughs> yeah, you does that help, I, Kim? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I actually had them do the, the um, in your class on Tuesday, I had them put the ball under the knee and do the seat, the lot, sit, sitting down one, quad yeah. presses. Or, yeah. Because I thought, well, quads, and it's supposed to be sort of a gentle class. So, um, so yeah. And I think that people, so you, you got me to straighten my knees. I think, first of all, a lot of people just can't. They, they, they have to keep working at it, especially as we get older. And then we think our legs are straight. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you, but people say, I'll, I'll say straighten your leg. And they'll be like, my leg is straight. I'm like, no. Um, I think it just takes, it takes repetition. Yeah. A lot of repetition. 
And yeah, uh, I don't know, a lot of repetition. And then what I've said to like Tia and her husband, because they both were having this problem, especially her husband, his knee was bent all the time. I'm like, you don't want to be some 80... 80- five-year-old guy running around like this and you can't straighten your limbs <laughs> just scared him <laughs> okay. scare tactics are always good <laughs> but that's hard to do that in a class so yeah it is hard to do it in a class and it's hard for people to realize that you're talking to them yeah exactly that's why it's hard to do like oh my legs are straight i'm not i don't have to listen like no no right. you your legs yeah. are not straight <laughs> all of you there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, it's also good practice. So the other piece of that was the starting that downward doggish or our elephant, right? So here, working here to lift the quads is really a great place also to really work and activate them. So lifting here, I just started them on that. And then I do a lot of calf raising here trying to keep those legs straight and almost trying to push upward instead of forward. So I'm not going forward, I'm going upward. And that really helps activate too. And forces those hamstrings open, which is always nice. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think what people don't get is that is it makes it easier in the, it's easier in your core if you straighten your legs and use your leg muscles too. Yes. Yes. That's, that's exactly the same as like on um, dead bug, right? If you straight if you straighten your leg and you don't you know, you don't tighten it. It's a lot harder to do. Yeah. You know, the other one that reminds me of another good one, bed bug, that I did with a client along the same theme. See, every, I have a theme, and then everybody gets the same theme in some variation all week long. <laughs> but if it, if it applies. So this mm-hmm. is another one I actually had a client doing where I had them do it on the roller even because I was just being a little bit mean. But <laughs> going out – here with the band makes them find that because it's resisted they go the whole way a little bit better so doing Mm. it in and out and finishing that stretch out and then doing it up and down and asking them to try and push from the back of the leg down right so getting enough resistance that they can really feel the length through and the cueing for me is always length and Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen away, and back up, and lengthen away, and up. So I find having a strong pull, uh, if it's too much for the shoulder, you might just have them do the legs separately so you can put enough resistance on there. But a good amount of resistance really helps pull that quad on. Are you holding the strap with two hands or one? Um, hand? No. Well, you have lots of choices, obviously. But what I actually did was this one: one arm going the diagonal. Oh, <laughs> the well, diagonal okay. and diagonal. the in one. <laughs> but you could, if it's too much resistance for both arms, you could take one side, anchor one, and just do the one arm. Oh, right. Going to if it's doubled over is too much resistance. So the bend and straighten gets them going, and then the straight leg up and down. Yeah, so that would be a good diagonal and quad. I know what we were going to talk about were the spirals of the getting into spirals instead of just diagonals. That's what it was. Finally, it comes to me. 
So that actually plays into the same theme in standing because the spiraling is what picks up the arch of the foot. Um, well, that's a good one. I got a good one right now. My feet are, I've been working on my feet lately because they've been getting flatter and flatter somehow. Um, so that spiral around line is the other piece of the diagonal, um, the more complex piece. And that's, I think, where we were headed last time. So this one, you guys have seen me do this. You two have seen me do this before. But I take my TheraBand. So the, the places where I feel like need, we're talking about a diagonal across the body this way now, right? So going into the limbs. And this would be, if I take this band and I step on it with the arch of the foot and then pull that up and around. So here's where it starts, down in the arch of the foot, then around the calf, up into the inner thigh, right? And then around catching glute medius is preferable. So trying to open it up over my glute, glute medius and then across here. So that's the lower part of that spiral. And that in itself is a diagonal, right? So I like to feel the pull at the foot, maybe because of my flat footedness. Oh, I've got a um, And then from here, I can pull across that diagonal with the, with the arm. So I've got it in the opposite arm than the foot that's wrapped. So Kim, it's gotta come up from the arch, not the outside of the foot. There that's you go. That's where I'm going wrong, okay. Yeah. Is that too many wraps? Not enough wraps. Um, so uh, it's only arch to calf and then across the inner thigh and glute medius. To the feet, medius, okay. And then I end up with it in front of me. Why do I end up with it in front of me? Did you come around the front of your thigh? No. So it goes arch of foot, <laughs> it goes in front of your ankle. Okay. In front of your ankle and around okay. your lower leg. Okay, to the back. And, and then up to the inner thigh, and then around your glute. Oh, it's rolling. <laughs> you get Come it? On, get with it. Just kidding. You were right. <laughs> I think you were right, Jen. It's rolling down to my knee. Oh. <laughs> this is an old band. Yeah. I usually get it there and then I spread it out in the few places where I feel like it's helpful to spread. One is across the buttock and across the arch. Does it kind of cross the back of the knee? It does sort of cross the back of the knee, yep. Great, okay, we got it, yahoo! So now you've got um, opposite hand in the band. So just standing here for a while, if I pull and I let my body go with it, so pull and let my body go, I end up right rotating, but I'm not letting my foot go. But this is that spiral inside the leg, right? Then I'm gonna fix myself, my pelvis back so I'm straight, but now I have that pull. You should feel like you have this spiraling up and crossing that lumbo th um, thoracolumbar fascia and out into this hand. So we could actually, if we really wanted to be clever, continue that up and out over the shoulder. And now we have our full diagonal, right? So I should have moved back a little bit. Right, so now I have this whole diagonal across the body with the spirals in it. And there's work happening in this leg in my obliques to get me here, yeah? So 
this is just a really nice feeling to be here and then try and just balance in that diagonal holding let the band pull you so you can put as much tension as you want but then you resist it back right and if you wanted that lat genevieve crossing you could go here around and out now we've got the lat in it too so we've got the diagonal because that's the lat here on the opposite side of the foot on the floor yeah so i'm working a lot i don't know if you feel that work but i feel a lot of work down in that leg all around the arch of the foot the leg the hip the oblique i don't feel as much but we also haven't had the upper wrapped for very long and i've been holding the lower wrapped for a long time so even just holding here is is big I like how it feels under my foot. Yeah, isn't it nice? Yeah. And then just pull a little harder and then hold your body position. You'll find that there's a lot of stabilizing work that comes up the chain for that. Yeah, and then if you unwrap, you feel very uneven. <laughs> I feel very different on one side than the other right now. Yeah, do you feel that? The side feels really warmed up and Yes. So I think we have to do the other side. Did you have a question about it or no, I don't. I'm just still trying to feel it, I think. Yeah, so Arch of foot, around the ankle, around the leg, around the glute. And then just stop there for a moment and just collect. So I pull up slack as I go and get it snug. It's very attractive on the legs. Yeah, so pick up slack, pull it hard enough that you feel like you have to work to resist. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then if you want to add the oblique diagonals rib cage, then we're here. I can take that all the way out. Or I can continue to the lat and wrap it around the arm one time and find that whole way and holding that. Now I'm really starting to feel that work. And I think if you're not feeling it very much, pull and rotate towards that side a little bit and then resist back and rotate and find it back then you'll find the work in it but you're quite balanced if you look if I look at you guys and I feel what I'm feeling I feel very quite very balanced here because my muscles are on in a good way mm -hmm. as I go through that motion and then huh, I feel like my arches are lifted I feel like I'm standing really tall without a lot of effort. Oh. Yeah. And my quads are on. That's the added side bonus. So, you know, the you this is a that's why I said the diagonals get so much more complex when we start talking about spirals in the body. But this is an exercise in the Pilates repertoire, right? It's the standing chair crossed over exercise. That's this, believe it or not. So that's turned out here. This wrapped, rolled, right? This side is, if my chair is here, this is wrapped and rolled, and this is on the step like this. That's how you get there. And then when you push down, you grow, right? And then release, you grow. 
So that's that same exercise. And then if you wanted to incorporate it going upward, you could have that opposite arm reaching as you go, right? That would be that full diagonal on that stance leg. Yeah, so we have it in the repertoire. And that exercise, I think it's done poorly a lot because people, I don't think, understand that whole wrapping spiral of it. They're just trying to stand there and push with this leg. They don't understand. Yeah. The exercise is really about the standing leg. And that is so different than this. Look at that positionally. It's totally different. Yeah. yeah. So that would be how you could replicate or do it in a simpler format than having to wrap around, but I think this really helps understand it in the body. So that was the diagonal that we were missing from last time, was the spiraling that I was like, oh, and we can go to diagonals, but then there's also this whole spiral. And a lot of it has to do with fascia, and I have to say I need to learn a lot more about fascia. Um, there are people who are just specializing in that, um, trying to learn a lot, I find it so fascinating what's happening in the world of fascia because it's so related to pain and function um, that it's really worth looking into a lot. It, and it has a lot to do with, I think, the healing process in the body. So, so yeah, that's what I have. Do you guys have anything else or input or feedback or whatever? I was just gonna say, so can we name the that spiral so that bottom of the foot, arch of the foot. Then we came through to the gastrox, like you said, the calves, wait, mm -hmm. calves. <laughs> and then um, the quad muscles, all, yep. all of them really, with it going mm -hmm. across like that. Yes. Glute medius. Yep. Obliques. Obliques. Right. And, yeah, okay. I'm just, I was just thinking it in my head. Yeah, if you do, you have a picture in your head of that thoracolumbar fascia. So if I picture the thoracolumbar fascia, something like this lattice type feeling comes in my head. So I've got my fingers all interlaced in sort of this diagonal. So that's sort of that fascia and the thoracolumbar fascia. And then what grows out of that is the lat, right? And it's diagonal because it's going diagonally from here up and out to that underarm and, and anterior shoulder. So if you can picture that wrap um, from the thoracolumbar fascia, I've got that diagonal going up into the front of the shoulder there. So it's, um, and then if you take that diagonal in, across the body into the glute, right, the glute muscles, right, are in this diagonal here going down. Then in all honesty, the hamstrings and the gastroc are pretty vertical. So there's not a lot of diagonal happening. The only diagonal is the vastus medialis and sartorius. So, and yeah, vastus medialis and sartorius are a bit diagonal across the front of the leg. Everything else in the legs are pretty darn long and straight. Long and straight, yeah. Until the foot. And then we get these incredible fascial networks. We have the long and straight, but we have the obliques. Um, we have oblique heads with muscles going sideways in the foot. Like it's really, um, really interesting what's happening down in that foot. So there's a lot that can be done. And then we have fascia pulling straight, but we have fascia pulling sideways. We have tendons crossing under the foot, like crossing at the bottom of the foot. So we've got a lot happening in that bottom of the foot that's diagonal. So, um, yeah. so yeah, that, so we could just um, draw, I should get a whiteboard because then I would just scribble all those lines for you. <laughs> I'm just looking at my anatomy. I'm looking at essential anatomy to look at the muscles. Muscles, yeah. Yeah. It's really good if you can, I can sit here and picture them in my head. It's really good if you can start picturing the direction of those fibers. Mm-hmm. I've been teaching my anatomy more and more that way when I'm teaching anatomy to people because I think it just really helps that understanding of what's going to happen when that contraction occurs, what can you expect to see happening, um, and how, does it, how do you get there. And if it's not firing, how are you going to access it? Right? I'm not going to pull the shoulder down by some muscle pulling straight down because that does not exist. 
all the shoulder muscles, the shoulder blade muscles are diagonals it's, or horizontal. They're not vertical. There's no straight muscle in the back except for the erector spinae group, right, right along the spine. So everything else is a diagonal. Right. Um, I take the erector spinae and the spinalis, the ones that go right up and down on each spine, but everything else is a diagonal. Multifidus is, um, there's a transversal spinalis deep in there that is diagonal. Uh, the lats are crossing diagonally. The upper trap, lower trap, mid trap are all diagonal or a little horizontal. Rhomboids are horizontal. Um, levator scapula is probably as straight as it gets, but even that's like a little bit diagonal like this. It's not totally vertical yet. Um, so all the way up were diagonals. Obliques. So rectus abdominis is vertical. That's the only vertical one, and it's a big dummy, so. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Even psoas is not straight. Nor is iliacus, like they really are on an angle. Mm -hmm. So, mm. yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at him now. I know. I knew, I, I was thinking the other day too, I was like, I wonder if I should try sharing screen because every time I want to show you something else, um, so maybe we can do a screen sharing or I, I think I could probably do it on that computer and just look up images of what I'm talking about at times. Yeah. That would be good. And then share it with you guys. Yeah, You can do screen sharing. I think anyone can share their screen. Yeah. In uh, zoom. That's what I've been doing for the rehab course is share right. screen sharing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, next week, um, do you want to do stabilizers of the body? The, the, um, well, so I'm going to do, what I'd love to talk to you guys about is um, glute med compared to, to serratus. Did we do that already? You mentioned it last time. Okay. How, how glute medius is sort of the serratus of the hip. Yes. Okay, then let's not do that one again. Let's do a different one. Um, Let's well, see. she she mentioned it, but did we talk very much about it? Because I don't remember. I think um, that was kind of it. it. That was the comparison was that it does the same, performs sort of the same function just for the hip as opposed to that it's lifting out of. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And that's we wanted to go over how to make that happen. Um, we could do that or we could pick a totally different theme. I can't remember what my next week's theme is. <coughs> Offhand, I do have it written down. I can let me tell you what it is and you can see if that's of interest to you. Okay. I had some good ones. Uh, Themes. Oh, go away. Where is it? Um, sorry, one second. Okay, um, oh, next week is the super psoas. Oh, okay. If you want, we can talk about the super psoas or um, we don't have to. I'm always game for psoas talk. Okay, mm -hmm. let's do psoas talk. Yeah, and in the meantime, if you guys have a chance, well, what I'd like to do is um, do a little reading up on the psoas. There's um, there's a lot of people who believe that the psoas is like the emotional center of the body and has a lot to do with your 
wellness and state. So if you have any um, interest in looking some of that up, um, huh. do and share it. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great topic because it is confusing. Sometimes I've had people say they've been told to strengthen their psoas. Yeah. I've been unclear about that. Yes, I'm unclear about strengthening psoas too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have had people say that and maybe they've got the wrong body part, but you know. Yeah. Like, oh, hmm, okay. There are people who need to strengthen psoas. Uh, I'm one of them, actually. I have weak psoas, but um, weak and long I have. But there, um, there aren't many people who need to strengthen their psoas, to be honest. I don't think. So I think it gets mis. I think what happens is it gets tight and inefficient, and people think it's weak, but it's really mm -hmm. because it's too tight, and so it has to be released in order for it to be able to work properly. So, so yeah, let's, let's do super so ads. And then I won't forget the theme because it's just my whole theme for the whole week. <laughs> sure. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Thanks you guys so much. And thanks again, Genevieve, Kim for Tuesday, Genevieve for tonight. Yeah. I'm trying to get myself together here. <laughs> do you have so a cold? Guess... You, do you have a cold, Santa, you think? Or is it, you think no, it's this is all smoke, believe it or not. Smoke, wow. I don't know why I'm so bad. Huh. Well, I've had two other people tell me that their throat's hurting, that, you know, tons of mucus, two, three. So, yeah. 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 I told Genevieve, I woke up in the middle of the night in a coughing fit and um, the window was closed, but even so I couldn't stop coughing from, it felt like there was smoke in the room. And, you know, mm. one of the things that I noticed um, is, like my hair will collect the smoke and then I'll lay on my pillow. Oh. Uh, and, and cause I felt that way the other night too, until I realized like, oh, let me just change my pillowcase. And I wrap, wrapped my hair in this bandana so that it wasn't touching the pillow. Okay. And I was able to stop coughing and I was able to sleep. Okay. So I don't know. That's a good suggestion. I did wash my hair right before bed, but I don't know. I don't know what I think I just and you know, like I told Genevieve, I tried to run on the treadmill. And I stopped like I don't think I've ever stopped in the middle of a workout. Ever. Oh. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I've had to slow down when I'm not feeling great. But I stopped I was 20, 25 minutes in and I'm like, I'm done, Matt. Sorry, Matt, I'm checking out this run. <laughs> I've never <laughs> done that to Matt Wolpers before. Oh. <laughs> or anybody. But I just couldn't. It was late. It, I probably shouldn't have even tried that late because I had been up too late at night. And But I can usually just do a really easy version of a workout and get through it. I could not last night. So, and it's so not specific. I couldn't tell you what was going on. It wasn't like I'm, I don't feel it in my lungs. I just feel it all in my throat and head. So, that's, and I that's sound exactly, terrible. That's exactly what I've heard the other three people say in their throat and head not in their lungs yeah yeah but that's why I had on Tuesday I, was, I luckily got the test earlier but that's why I was like oh my gosh I can't that's the only time but yeah. um but yeah I was like I see I have to be sure that it's that and not COVID well, loss of client thank god it's yeah. not COVID yeah yeah I mean I was so scared that can you imagine if I give it to somebody else I'd just die I think <laughs> So. But you don't have it, so we're all good. No, we're all good. Just sound bad, but all good. <laughs> all right. All right, you guys. I'll see you soon. Thank I'll you again. You. Bye. 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 Bye.